Thank you, Jay. Uh, I, I really appreciate all that. I want to congratulate all the all the Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, it, it's really quite an honor. Uh, I'd like to recognize my family, uh, my wife Linda, my son Brad. It's, where's Brad? Brad? Michelle, his wife, my daughter-in-law. All my cousins from New Orleans. People don't realize that I've got a lot of cousins in New Orleans. And uh, they've always been very supportive. Even when I played at Tulane, they would, they would come and support us, uh, support me. I want to thank the committee. This is a great honor. Rumble is a very, very special place. When I was coaching at Southern Mississippi and Mac Brown called me to come to coach at Tulane, uh, talked to my wife, we were gonna, we had a son that was gonna be in the ninth grade, that son Trey. And, you know, of course, recruiting all those schools, they all said, well, why don't you send your kid here, send your kid there. And I told them, they ain't one place we're sending him. That's wrong, okay? I don't wanna, you know, I've been to every school. I've recruited every school. I know the inner workings of every school, and this was the best place for him. The only thing is, when he got home one time, I started questioning him. I said, well, what's it like over there? You got this, you know, good athlete, you look up to anybody? He said, yeah, it's got Darren Darez. He, he's really a good athlete. And I really, I heard, I heard about Darren, but man, after I got to know him, I started questioning him. Just kidding, Darren. But that's why I sent my son here. How I got to Rumble is really God's work. I'm telling you, it's God's work. Uh, for 24 years, I worked at eight different schools, four high schools and four colleges, all right? I was in transition at Nickel State. I had about another few months, and I'd had some offers, you know, to go back and coach in college, but I'd been there, done that, really didn't want to do that. Had some offers to go into business, you know, basically selling insurance. Didn't know if I wanted to do that. I prayed, Lord, just find me something that matches my talents to where I can be successful. I did banking at this little bank in Thibodeau, it was the Cadian Bank. Some of y'all may have heard this before. It's never a line in there, okay? Just walk up to the teller because it's so small. Well, I walk in there and it's like five to six people deep. I glance over, I see a Times pick of you, and I pick it up, I go to the sports. I see that Rumble is looking for an athletic director, okay? And it was two days before you could get it in, and they were closing the application process. So I looked at it, I went home, talked to my wife, Linda, and I said, I'm gonna give a call. So I made a few phone calls and went to the interview. Brother Gail Condit headed up the interview. And he had a committee. So he met with me, talked to, you know, about an hour, two hours. Then the next day, he wanted me to come meet David Hart, the principal. So I went over there and met him. And it was just something that just hit me. You know, this is where I'm supposed to be. And with all that other stuff falling into place, you know, it, it had to be something, it had to be, you know, the hand of God in this, there's no doubt in my mind. And you know what's remarkable? Think about this, people. Rumble's had two, only two ADs in 50 years. Wow. 50 years. <clears throat> Ryan Dole, of course, who was a good friend of mine, you know, for 20, 26 years or so, maybe more, 24 for me. Where else does that happen? Where else could that happen except at a school like this where you get somewhere? And I'm telling you this, you know, in the old days, when I say old days, before I got to Rumble, <laughs> I had jobs and I was always looking for the next one, okay? And that's the way it is in coaching. I mean, especially when you get in college coaching, you better be ready to move on a snap. Yeah, I'd moved four times in eight years. My wife saw a, a U-Haul van and she'd have a panic attack. Okay? <laughs> But uh, this was the place for me. And I never even looked at another job when I got here. Since 1997, as Jay mentioned, when we started the Hall of Fame, I have listened 
to every Hall of Fame speech, okay, by all the athletes. And the only other person probably that did the same is Bill Arthur, okay, because he'd been to everyone taking pictures. The thing that impresses me the most is not wins, losses, that kind of thing, but it's the relationships that those guys developed over the years. You know, just like the basketball team, how close-knit they were. You know, the baseball team, how close-knit they were. All these people, the, the theme is the same, okay? The theme is the same, relationships. A school that cared about me, and that's Rumble High School, and it always will be. I remember my first assembly at Rumble. We had all the meetings and everything, and we go in the gym and they're having a prayer service. Then all of a sudden, the band comes in, okay, in their uniforms, marching in the gym, playing the fight song. That was the LSU fight song, but uh, I took the song. <laughs> I got used to it. But I tell you what, I tell you what, I teared up. I don't mind telling you. I was almost like crying like a baby. It just, it was that emotional for me to see that type of pride and see that type of, of, uh, of, of the, the school, the gym being packed with people, the song, you know, the, the fight song being played. Just incredible, just incredible. And that's the thing about it, Ron. Like I mentioned before, the relationships. You know, I work for five principals. Most of them were pretty good. <laughs> Especially the last two. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I, I got along with, with all of them, but the thing that I enjoyed the most, you know, besides with the coaches, okay, like, uh, you know, when I got here, Frank Cazzo, we were right next to each other in the office. Of course, Jay mentioned that I hired him, just uh, and being with the with the coaches and, and the relationship. It's like, Jay said, I never really criticized him or, or come, Jay, you had your father. I didn't want to come back and listen to you. you know, your father was telling you what to do all the time. I didn't want to be the one doing that too. I felt bad for you on that case. But one time, I got to tell the Frank Cazzo story. We're playing judging. They got this big first baseman who's knocking the heck out the baseball. He gets three straight hits against us, okay? And we're still in the game. We're still playing good. All of a sudden, this kid comes up again. Surely he's going to walk him, I'm saying, okay? Don't let him. No, Frank pitched to him. He doubled off the wall on the game. So after the game, you know, I said, Frank, I never, you know, want to second guess you anything, but that guy had three hits. What made you pitch to him in that situation? He said, yeah, he got three hits. I just didn't think he could get four. <laughs> that <laughs> but uh, the fact that they interacted with you know here was just tremendous uh, the fact that he was so supportive of the school okay so supportive I mean Debbie LeBrano the librarian her, she and I would talk and complain about Tulane not recruiting you know rumble kids we talk about that I muscle white we both in Mississippi so we hit it off okay we wasn't on the same page Politically, but we, uh, we never got any fights, but we did get some arguments a little bit, you know. But that was fine, okay? That, that was fine. You know, I think, you know, Cheryl Mirror, she'd always, she had that mind that, you know, finances and stocks and bonds and all that stuff. We talk about that. And one of the favorite things we did was had an away football game, uh, Joe Serio and, uh, Mr. Scalco and Connie Carrigy, we would all, you know, take a, take a road trip, okay? Now, if y'all know me, my wife, I hate to be late for anything, okay? But I try to make sure we, we, we left early enough so we could get back, you know, get to the ball game on time. Of course, Joe Serio always picked out the places to go eat, okay? And he wasn't worried about getting there on time, okay? He was worried about getting the food. But he'd pick out the places to eat. Normally, I would drive or Mike would drive. 
And uh, and Connie, of course, she was a huge football fan, a huge sports fan. I tell you, nobody that works hard at this school than she does. I used to be here late, I'd see her car out there. I used to be here on weekends for soccer games or football games, but she'd be out there. She works extremely hard. And she is really what a prime example of great pride is because she takes a lot of pride in her work, a lot of pride in this school. Jay mentioned about how I looked saw my role as an AD. I did not see my role as being uh, the face of the program. I wanted the coaches to be the face of the program. And I wanted the players to be the face of the program. I loved watching the kids play from the eighth grade all the way up to the, to, the, to the high school level, just to see them develop. Came back one time, I don't think Jay caught the game, they were practicing their way. I said, Jay, man, they got this frick, this eighth grade, he is gonna be really good. He said, who is it? Craig Stelz. I said, I said yep, yeah. I, I thought about that later on. He was pretty good, <laughs> he was real good. But watching those kids develop, you know, uh, Chase 4K developing the quarterback, he did, uh, uh, Jamar Chase, watching those kids. You know, watching them from the eighth, ninth grade on up to the varsity was just really a special thing for me and I enjoyed it. But I wanted those kids, the only thing I ever preached to them was one thing, compete. I want you to compete. Because everything you do in life, you're gonna have to compete, whether you like it or not. And that's the main thing I try to instill upon them. Every now and then, the coach would, uh, some kid would get in trouble and I'd have to call him in my office. And I wasn't too nice to him, but that was, that was a rare thing. There's so many special moments I can recall at Rumble. It's just incredible. You know, the state championships, the, the games against Barb High School, because I had a grandson playing for Barb and a granddaughter cheering for Barb during that time. So that was, Sort of a special thing. So, I, you know, I had a son-in-law coaching at Bar, but I did not want to lose it. I believe. <laughs> Unfortunately, we lost that game by one run in baseball in spring. And, and lo and behold, what happens in the fall? The next state championship, football, we're playing as Rommel and Barb again. But that was a great night. It was just a tremendous job by our kids. I watched that. I watched that film the other night just to watch it. And we were down in fourth quarter, but we ended up blowing them out in the fourth quarter, too. Those things, uh, the, the state championships were fun to watch. Uh, when I was up in Shreveport and watched this one, that first state championship in wrestling, just incredible, just incredible. But I'm gonna tell you the, special, the most special moment I had in Rome, which exemplifies what I believe the school is all about. We're playing at Cadiana High School defending state champion. I think it was in 2011. That's right. Is that right? Yes. 2000, I think Kenny, Kenny knows everything. <laughs> 2011. On the field, we have some good players, but they're hurt. Yep. They're limping. Damon Williams is hurt, okay? He's out there on one leg. Stephen Carter, out there on one leg. Who's the little running back? Brown. Right? Brown. Brown. He's out there on one leg. And the offensive lineman we had. Uh, Dominic Billich. Billich. He's out there. On. I mean, these kids are out there working their tails off. All right. They're not, they're not giving in. They're not giving in. They are hurting, but they're out there and they are competing. And we had one that was healthy that night who picked up the slack for all those kids that were hurting. That was, uh, Cyril, Cyril, Grayson. Cyril Grayson. Cyril took that game on his shoulders and we beat Acadiana High School that night. That was the proudest I have ever been of a football team in my entire life, coaching or watching. With the way they went out there, hurt, banged up, and still they wasn't coming out. They were going to finish the game. And that's what Rommel is all about. You finish, you compete, you don't give any quarter, and you never quit. That's the thing that our coaches instilled upon these kids. Now the next week we went to, uh, I think we played Bird High School, Bird. who was a really good football team. 
one of my former players at Northeast was the head coach at Burke. And our kids are still hurt, but they're battling. Now they end up losing the game, but they, they went out there and they battled a good football team. So what's the Rumble all about? It's about individuals like that, like these individuals who play, and over the years, the history of this, of this great, great school. And we're all adding to that history. I have always been extremely proud to wear my Rumble shirt. Whether I'm in the gym working out, whether I'm going to the mall, whatever. I've always been proud to wear my Rumble shirt. And don't let anybody ever tell me that we're not as good as this school or that school because that is not true. That is not true. I'm very proud of this school. 24 years as the athletic director, I have been really blessed. Blessed to have good people around me, blessed to have uh, good coaches, good kids, and just blessed to be a part of the history of this awesome, awesome school and program. Thank you very much.